morning sorry you caught me i was just thinking i'll pull a few backgrounds out uh so who we got jennifer caroline the other jennifer gloria anita how are you all this fine um sunny morning you squeeze this in before it gets really really hot <laughs> Okay, so we are looking at uh, brand new Tutti Designs dies, and um, these are launching on the craft store tomorrow at 11 a.m. and 3 p.m. And do remember that uh, Tutti Designs are an American company, so um, if you're going to order, you need to order um, before the end of tomorrow. I have spotted that the dies are actually up and live on um, on the website now. So as we go through, you might want to go and have a look and look at their um, uh, prices. Okay, so let's let's just run you through what's on the show. So we do have some returning dies, um, some that you will probably have missed out on and I know I've had some emails about some of them and incidentally I'm not stocking uh, Tutor Designs dies now and it's not because the quality is bad or anything because the quality is excellent and I would not be demonstrating them if I didn't think so I certainly wouldn't be doing Facebook lives with them if I didn't think so so they are absolutely brilliant dies but obviously I get hit with import duties VAT I have to pay shipping uh, Royal Mail handling charge and it just makes it not very uh, viable for me as a small business to bring them in obviously if I was bringing in huge quantities then it would be different so um, do uh, uh, shop at the craft store for all of them um, either today or tomorrow right so one of the returning dies is this one this is our slimline bamboo frame and I remember demonstrating this when we actually had it on. You can actually cut it down, but I'll show you that there is actually an easy way coming up. Um, because uh, obviously matching them up uh, and hiding and disguising your join is can be a little bit difficult. Um, but uh, you can do it if you want to. So these, these are the tall slimline. These aren't DL, these are tall slimline. So um, my finished card is normally, well, you, you fold an A4 piece of card lengthways. Let's get a piece so here's your a4 piece of card and you'll fold it instead of folding it on the three so if you fold it fold it into thirds that's your dl you fold it lengthways so long ways okay so that's four and an eighth inches wide and then you decide how long you want it so i normally do uh nine and an eighth inches so all my mats and layers are nice and neat but that will fit on there you can see that this is just a little bit smaller because it's matted on okay so that's that's your, your tall slim line so that's the first one they don't come on magnetic sheets i don't tend to if it's just a single die i tend to just put it back onto the um the sticky that's that they come with so i don't don't normally bother i've got stuff everywhere put that down there in a minute right so that's the first one then we've got this one returning as well this is your uh, slimline stitch collage frame oh I, should, I could show you a sample with the bamboo because i'm not quite with it so here's one of my samples from last time with the um slimline bamboo just with three fans on there really easy to do that one so the stitch collage i really like this one because obviously you're going to get fall away pieces here um uh, which you can then actually um if you cut them in different colors you can paper piece them back in again you've obviously got apertures there if you want to put things behind um or you can kind of stack things up um i really 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 like that one um that one is a tremendous one so i've got a few samples that i've made with this one so i did one with Catherine's graduation a few pictures there like a scrapbook kind of page which is nice to have up on the wall if you want to that's an easter card where i paper pieced in some different color card um oh that's coming up oh that was a little little bit of a, a sneaky peek have i got another one with that i should have another one with gnomes on i'll have a look at some point so we've got this one as well so i was asked loads because this sold out we've only had it on once before so um 
this sold out last time um, and then I got loads and loads of emails so this one's called your um, slimline maple leaf and there is actually an A6 one as well that we've had on before obviously again you can cut this down and match it up and try and hide the joins if you want to make a smaller one but this one's brilliant so you can actually obviously use it as a big frame and here I've used alcohol inks on a piece of glossy card with it. So that's just a really simple one. Great for you guys and any autumnal makes. But you can also put um, Trudy Howard's Fashionistas in there as well. This is one of the Roaring Twenties um, ladies. So she's going to fit in there nicely as well. So just as an alternative to your DL size, you've got your tall slims with those. So I think that that's going to be uber, uber popular again. So if you really had your eyes on that last time, remember if you shop at the craft store, if you're a Freedom member, you're not going to get hit with any of your postal charges uh, or any of your import charges, etc., etc. It's going to be delivered to your door free. Even if you're not a Freedom member, you'll only pay whatever the postage is and you're, you're not going to... Honestly, if you try and import it from the States, it's going to cost you a lot more money. This is another returning one. We've had this on a couple of times, your Asian lands landscape. Uh, obviously, for all of your oriental designs, I've got quite a few samples with this one on. So we've got patchwork background. We've also had... Um, cherry blossom leaves on there as as well obviously you can see it's going to fit into your circle die so any circle dies you've got uh we've got the bamboo background that we've had on before very simple cards to make but um easy peasy and very effective so that's your asian landscape back again i'll keep hold of that one for a minute i think I'll try and speed this up a bit. Now, I did mention to you, didn't I, that um, there is an easier way to trim down your bamboo frame, and that's by actually buying the uh, smaller one. So this is your A6 version. So it's exactly the same as the tall slim, but it's your A6 version. Bab. Not a lot else we need to say. Oh, what am I doing here? So we've got uh, stitch nesting squares, and these are obviously smaller. I put mine on a magnetic sheet. These are smaller than obviously um, a lot of them that you'll find, but obviously it reflects in the price. So the largest die is going to be three and three eighths square, and your smallest one is hard to see on the black. Uh, looks like it's five eighths of an inch. Okay always useful to have remember all your patchwork things that you can do with it frames that you can make um you know if you don't want to make massive cards it's really handy to have then we start on the new ones no we don't we're doing this one first fancy hearty cat love the fancy hearty cat do you know I can't, i've made loads of samples with this i even made my daughter's birthday card with it last year obviously i sent her that but i cannot find any of my mates with this so when you cut this, obviously you're going to get all these little hearts that pop out, which you can then, if you want to, paper piece back in again or keep for another project. You can also paper piece back in your swirls and also the little um, kind of necklace pieces, as I've done here. So here I've teamed it up with the bamboo frame, the, the A6 one, and just matted and layered it. It's just so simple to do. Yeah, it can, it can, I, I, that's why I, yeah, it's very expensive to import from the States. So if you can buy from somewhere in the UK, then it's a lot better. This is my top tip. Don't miss out on Fancy Hearty Cat. It was, it was, he sold out really, really quickly when he was on before. And, um, I mean, I struggled to get it. I did stock it at one point, but uh, I did struggle to get stock. So I love that. On the cat theme, they do cats really, really well at 2T. We've got a new one, Window Cat. And this is brand new, launching uh, tomorrow um so you don't need to do very much with this at all um so he can he can just be sitting at the window you can put a colored collar on if you want to you can snip you can decoupage if you want to whatever but you know he looks fabulous just black on white or white on black you don't need to do anything else that's all you need to do great for kind of thinking of you how are you kind of card and we've got, oh, not that. Then we've got another frame here, your spring birds. This is, again, these are all new ones we're looking at. 
and um, uh, I think this would be great uh, and I have got a demo planned to uh, if you s cut it in a different colour and snip away the birds and then you can kind of decoupage and shape the wings on top. Uh, I think there'll be um, samples in the studio from the design team so that will ha actually help out. Uh, then we, we're on to a very kind of under the sea theme now uh, with the rest of the dies that are on the show. This is beautiful. This is your roped wreath. As you can see, there's a rope around the edge. But um, I mean, obviously, I've stuck all this down. But you've got the little bits here on the seahorses, which will have actually lift out. I think I've actually stuck them all down. Oh, I can't. Oh, there we go. I haven't. So you can see you can actually lift them out to so give them a little bit of movement if you want to. Um, also, the, the, there's a little bit on on um, this chappy here. Again, I don't know whether I've stuck that. Yeah, I've stuck that down. But I'll show you when we actually come to do a demo with it uh, at, the, on the, at the studios, how they all lift out. But that's a really nice scene. Obviously, you can just use a little bit of if you want to. You can paper piece the snail back in or the... Um, the uh, turtle as well so really really uh, lovely lovely die and they're all good sizes I mean look the packaging is really deceiving I mean it's almost an A6 so this is five inches long by four inches wide so really large uh, die then we've got our coral window the, the this one actually cuts into the card so so I've left this really scrappy uh, the way I've just cut it with my scissors so hopefully you can tell it's not straight because it's not meant to be so that's going to stay in your card and we're going to use this one in in uh, one of the demos I show you today when I get on with it um uh so obviously you can look into that you can have loads of things kind of at the back of that um I have got one sample that I've made here and we've got the fishes coming up so um just really easy to use i've put one of my fairy hugs stamps on there um all tutu designs are really easy to do and that you know you don't need to think about what you're doing which is what i really like with them you can really blast off your cards really quickly then we've got a corner this is your upper reef corner so we've got your jellyfish in there and some other fishes and starfish not a lot i can say about that one then we've got jellyfish now the jellyfish is really cool because I think that you could use the jellyfish with some of your um, fairy hug stamps as well. So we've got here wiggles, so you could use them alongside with wiggles to give a bit of dimension. So you could you can use the the jellyfish, you perhaps cut them out a couple of times and stick them together so it's got a bit of dimension. Or have your wiggles in the background making a background, or if you've got this paper pad from studio light there's a paper in there that's got jellyfish on already and all i've done is um embossed it uh double embossed it with a couple of wow powders i've used the midnight dream and the calypso um and and then just stuck it on with one of the um there was serenity which is one of the fairy hugs um sentiments on there really easy to do obviously i've got the benefit of having my background paper already from this studio light one from a couple of years ago um but if you haven't got that you can just use your stamps to make yourself a background so it's kind of really again really really easy to do okay that's that one then we've got a uh, mermaid uh coral so it's a mermaid in the coral and we're going to be using her in our demonstration. We've got this beautiful one here, which is our jumping dolphin. Um, obviously, this to me looks like you could use it with um, a bit of paper piecing in there. You could use it on acetate and use your um, your crystal tints or your pearl tints behind it, which would be lovely from Cosmic Shimmer. Um, really, really pretty alcohol ink background as well. Um, really nice dolphins are always popular then we've got our porthole and this does actually um open out if you want it to i've got one cut here so you can see that it does actually this is actually loose obviously i've glued it down from there so if you wanted to you could actually um uh, draw on a piece of acetate and cut a piece of acetate and put that behind it and have that opening if you wanted to um wherever rocks your boat 
again they're, they're so much bigger than the packaging there's i really like the fact that tutti don't think oh that that that's that size let's have a piece of packaging that's this size you know it, it just it makes sense doesn't it and we've got your mermaid tail again much much bigger um i've got a few ideas of what you could be doing with that beautiful roped anchor look at that for a roped anchor again this is a really good size die uh, this one is three and a half inches roughly by at its widest point three just over three three and an eight so again really good size but you know could be used for masculine mates but it's got kind of um undersea uh, flowers on it so you could put it on feminine mates as well um yeah june all these will work well with the fairy hogs it's it's almost like they were kind of made together isn't it really so here we've got a mermaid scene really really pretty mermaid scene really like that one i can see this one being you could use this with the portal so the porthole sorry so that could go over there so all you need to do is snip off the extra little bits so it's looking through the portal into the um the, the scene that's beyond so i think that would work very well together then we've got um some extremely floral flip-flops that way around apparently there we go that does make sense um again quite large dies um they are let's see uh, four inches from top to top top to bottom rather um yeah on, on your beach kind of projects and then we got the fishies your reef fish five fishies kind of two lots the same pointing to each other and then this big ear as well so they're going to be great if you want to kind of use your your, your porthole which i've got here and you could have your your fishies kind of swimming about you know th this this portal this is um this is this is kind of like c class this is the people that have to slum it down below isn't it and they're kind of having seen the fishies through their porthole as opposed to a scene um whatever story you want to give them really um but really cool so that's it that's everything that's on the show absolutely loads and we've got to get through them all in two hours <laughs> i don't know how that's going to happen any road let's press on and let's do some demonstrating for you so we're going to start really really simply and i'm going to make a proper card that opens and everything look i know i know sit down if you're not already sitting down <laughs> and i've got some mats and layers this is from a ve i'm very lucky that i've got all this stuff that i keep this is from the very very old heartfelt creations um paper pad called the bot from the balmy breeze collection so um it's a, a 12 by 12 paper pad um and um i've just chopped a little bit out i mean that just makes a lovely card on its own but we're going to obviously add to something to it because we can so i'm just all i'm going to do is just bring in my lovely cat and have him looking out the window over at the lighthouse that's all i'm going to do with that okay so let's get gluing because it does take a while so i've just trimmed my backing paper just to be a fraction smaller than my pussycat so let's get the old glue on it now obviously you could cut this out and, and this is it's like swinging and swings and roundabouts with this you could cut this out with a uh, double-sided adhesive and i recommend the elizabeth craft designs one for doing this um and then you can just pop it down obviously you're committed once you've actually um popped it down it's very difficult to move it around if you don't get it quite right uh, which glue does give you that chance to do to, to move it around also when you're dealing with uh, an intricate die like this uh, with lots of fall away pieces it can take a long time to get all the kind of um the adhesive pieces out of the die because sometimes they um they come away from the uh carrier sheet and it's you have to just the only way to get them out is to just poke every single one with your pokey tool and gouge them out 
I'm sure if anybody's done it, they know what I'm talking about. Any road, it is swings and roundabouts because obviously doing it with glue takes quite a long time. Um, and this is where they kind of lead me to it on the craft store and go away and do stuff and then come back to me five minutes later when I've just about finished. It's not exciting TV, I know that, but um, I don't know how else to do it. Um, like I say, that you are committed if you've got your a double sided adhesive on. And again, if you you're not, if you've got something that you want to line up perfectly, it's it's just a bit difficult. And obviously at home, you've got all the time in the world to do whatever you want. I think I've got I'll oh, put a little bit on there as well. So this cat's window shopping. This is my head down to a T. He loves his window shopping. I'm sorry about the noise. They're laying gas pipes on the estate next to us. Um, still, they've been doing it for weeks. Yeah, after he's had his dinner or his breakfast or his lunch or whatever meal, he goes and sits by the patio door and window shops. He likes it best if the patio door is open because then he can go in and out as he pleases. I think that's glued. So if it doubt, have a chat while you're doing it. Let's get a bit of paper. Now, what my, my top tip with this is to pick it up, clean underneath so you've not got any residue um, glue underneath, and pop it on and immediately fetch it off. Don't leave it too long because it's going to stick. Now, we've given got a rid of the excess now, so hopefully... Let's do it this way. Make sure this is the right way up. So hopefully we're we're not too gluey that it's going to all squeeze out. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. There we go. Can't get it. Oh, um, Jennifer, you need to um, wait really until Els has shows on the craft store. And uh, then they normally have um, at least some of the double-sided rolls or the sheets or something like that uh, on there uh, when she has shows because obviously that's getting shipped from Holland. So um, it's not there all the time. So there we go. So all we're gonna do now is pop it onto our black card. And I'm gonna pop a sentiment down the bottom. So I'm gonna have it up a bit. I think I'm going to put it on a little bit of, shall I put it on a little bit of foam tape? Just a little bit of one millimetre. So this could be a cat looking out a cottage window. It doesn't have to be obviously a lighthouse. I just had a lighthouse. I did look at cottage windows and, you know, like um, garden scenes. Um, if you've got a photograph, if you've got a lovely garden, if you take a photograph, um then um, you could have your photograph of your garden with your cat in front of it. That would be a nice card to send somebody, especially if you've not seen somebody for a while, you know, and they haven't been able to visit your garden. So I've got, let me find my sentiments. I'm going to use, I'm going to use one of my fairy hugs ones. I'm going to have a birthday wish for you, because I might send this to my daughter. So... But let's let's do that first and let's just pop it down the bottom. Um, I'm not going to chance it. I'm going to get my stamping platform out. Because knowing me, I make a mess. It is Sometimes it is a good idea to do your stamping before you actually put your topper on, especially if you've done a lot of work on your topper. I mean, I haven't done a lot of work on my topper, but I don't know if I've got another sheet of that paper left. I need to go down the bottom. So, let's have a look. So, we're going to have our topper about there-ish. So, my birthday wish has got to go right the way down the bottom. It only just fits on. Hopefully that's straightish. 
because it will show up because being so near the bottom it'll show up. Let's have Nocturne versus Fine Clay. Creak, this one really creaks. Oh, did she say that? Yeah, I think she's had a delay on the, the rolls in the past actually. Um, <laughs> I've got a spare Jennifer. <laughs> I'm a bit like Phil, I don't like to run out. <laughs> Not that he uses it, but um, he doesn't like to run out of anything. He's got like two or three of everything that he uses. <laughs> right, so this is my fairy hug stamp. Birthday wish for you. I do have it on my website. The next Fairy Hugs One Day Special with again with brand new stamps is on the 16th of June, is it? Or 17th? It's next Thursday, 17th. I get mixed up because I'm, I'm, I'm on the 16th of July as well. So I get the July and the, and the June mixed up. That's going to go on there. I don't think we'll put foam tape on it. I think we'll just do it flat because it's got a bit of dimension from the layers that I put on there. And then when I send it, I might get away with just a letter rather than a large letter. You never know, do you? Am I running out? Yeah, let's get another glue. bigger one. Let's see if we can get this straight. Plenty of room. There we go. How easy is that? How quick and easy is that? Yeah, they're lovely sentiment stamps, yeah. Right, easy peasy. So so that's a non non kind of under the sea one with the new cat um design that's on there. Super, super, super. Right, so let's do something with some of the under the sea stamps. So normally it's very difficult when I kind of do all my prep, I think what shall I do on a Facebook Live and what shall I actually do on the TV? And we're doing this and we're going to make a pop-out a pop -out card. And we're doing this because I've done a few on the TV. And why shouldn't you guys get the benefits? So what we've got is, let me get all my bits and pieces. Don't know if I'm using that one. Right. So what we've done is I've taken a piece of Sentiment to Yours Pure White card. A4 card, cut it in half. So that's 14.8 centimetres. I do everything in inches, but half an A4 is 14.8 um, um, centimetres. Jean, I've got quite a few, so it's not a problem. Um, you won't need to uh, be saved one. Uh, okay, so then cut it in half. And then on this piece, all I've done is scored half A5, A5 folded it in half. In this one... I've scored half A5 and then I've scored gate A5 as well. So that puts it into quarters. Okay. And then what I've done is I've taken, as you can see already, this way up. I've taken my um, my coral window or reef window. Yeah, coral window. I won't get all the names right of this. Popped it on right way up. After you, after you folded it. Popped it on, and now it comes. Okay, so that was the noise of the of the, of the machine. <laughs> and there's our aperture, so we can see through that. So obviously that's going to then sit inside my card like that. Okay, and that will fit into a, a A6 envelope. So it's a diddy one. If you want to make a big card, uh, an A5 card, then you need to take two sheets of A4 and then score it, you know, in half and then in quarters on one of them and in half on the other and you'll just have a bigger piece. 
whatever you want okay so now we want to decorate and it's a good idea to decorate the two pieces separately i mean obviously because we've got this this going on here i mean when you do cut it do be careful that you you're you're like that isn't exactly on the fold because you don't want that folding in half really I um, hope that makes sense um, what you could do is get some of the uh, fire line kind of thread and have it dangling from here and you could have kind of fishies going in the background if you wanted to dangling along we could also bring in and I'm not going to because I don't think it works we could bring in our fish here and I've uh, embossed this with a couple of embossing guises, salvage patina and the um, uh, crap pistachio. So you could have it kind of like that, but if you, when you fold that, it's sticking out. So that means that when we put it into our card, so you need to think about how you decorate things, it's gonna not fit in my A6 envelope. So that's a no go, but we're gonna use that for something else. We will use that for something else, okay? So let's decorate the inside first. Let's get this underway. So going back to my lovely um, paper pad that Lou gave me from Studio Light. This one. Ocean View. So lucky to have this because it's got loads and loads of really great... Um, it's probably not available anymore, which is a real tease of me. I'm really sorry, but sometimes I've got to use what's in my stash rather than just having loads of stuff. So we're going to start by just putting a couple of pieces either side. And these are this is just an end of a sheet. And the rest of the sheet is that there, which I'm going to use on the front. So we're just going to glue that in place. <laughs> great sound, sound effects yeah you could have jaws going going in there you could have a pic uh, ah there we go Jean. you could have a paper that has jaws on it and have that uh, at the back because we've got to put a paper at the back anyway that would be really funny that would be quite a scary thing for whoever opens him because because obviously the inside of the car they don't see until they actually open it up uh, and it pops out that's I like that Jean, that's tickled me. Right, let's get this on and we're having the netting at the side and the corks there. I'm going to see if I get this straight because I want this to be a nice card. Okay, and then we get this one on this side with the netting on that side. I love. I really like making pop out cards. I used to work for Wendy Stenton years ago. She was my real introduction into um, proper paper craft, really, I suppose. And Paul Church was working with her at the time as well, and um, she did a lot of these pop out stencils. Obviously, we it's a lot easier nowadays. We can do them with dies. Okay, so there's my kind of uh, piece there, all done. I'm going to put some other things on the inside, but first of all, I think we're going to move to the outside. Now, when you look through the pop out, what you want, what you want to do is you don't want to actually look at just a piece of white card. So that's where. So here we're going to put a background paper in. So I've taken one of my um, Studio Light papers from the same pad, and it's got loads of fishes on it. Do make sure it's the right way up. And that's and all I've done is just trimmed it so that it's um, how big is this? It doesn't matter how big it is actually, as long as it's because uh, it's a six by six paper pad. So I've left the width as it is because I'm not going to be able to use a strip. And then I've cut it so it's a little bit shorter. So it was fourteen point eight centimeters and now it's five and a half inches. Fourteen point eight centimeters is just over five and three quarter inches. So we're going to just glue that in here, but we're not going to glue it exactly what you don't want to do is is just glue it like this because i've put a fold in it don't glue it like that don't just don't glue it like that because what will happen is it'll all rock up in in inside all you need to do is just pop some glue i'm, I'm using the glue that's nearly empty get rid of that Julia. there we go just put a line of glue along one side only pop it 
into the fold. Make sure your fishes are the right way up, but they are. Pop it into the fold and then fold your card and give it a good press. She was, she was, yeah. It, they were easy though, because they were, so June saying that Wendy was brilliant with different shaped cards. Yeah, she really was. And she did like K cards as well that popped out the front. I've still got some of my, some template plates in the garage that I need to sort through because I used to stop them um, years and years and years ago. So I've opened that up. That's a quick grab. So that's grabbed it on that side. So now I'm going to just run a line of glue on the other side here. Now we don't need to worry too much because we know that when we bring in our card, let's just fold that, when we bring in our card, it's going to go over those edges, over those sides. So you do need to make sure it's wide enough to go, to be, oh, let me try and explain. You need to be make sure it's wide enough to cover that, that fold there. So it needs to be over the edge. Can you see? So it's actually a little bit over there. So when you open this, can you see we've got that kind of gap there? Let's see. I'm not really showing you very well. I'm waiting for this to... You can't, uh, let's see. Come on. There we go. Right, you caught up with me. So you can see you've got that gap there. That's what you want. If you'd actually put the, the paper on flat... Um, when you open it up, it would be all rooked up and, and a bit of a mess anyway. So that's already shaping up, isn't it? Looking great. So that's that's all we need to do on that inside there. So now we're going to decorate the outside. And I've got the rest of my paper from my um, panels. And we're going to put this on the front. But we're going to actually just change it and, and, and mess it up a little bit because we can. So my idea is that I'm going to bring in our um, mermaid here, which I can't remember the name of her. This is going to drive me nuts, not being able to remember the names of anything at all. Mermaid Coral. So she's going to fit really nicely in there. We've got room for a sentiment up here. So I think we're going to bring in... Did I decide on this one, Serenity? Yeah, we decided on Serenity. Again, this is a fairy hug stamp, which I'll probably stamp and emboss in white. So that's gonna go up there. But I think we might add a little in the background. So I thought we'd bring in, again, fairy hugs. I thought we'd bring in the old tentacles, which is a great background stamp. So we can have some of these just in the background, maybe. Let's just do it. Let's see what it looks like. Okay, so I think what we're going to do is, because I don't want it to be prominent, because she's, I don't want to do too much white, because otherwise I'll lose the impact of her and the, the sentiment. So this is definitely going to be a background uh, bit of stamping that we're doing. Let's get my stamping platform again. Here it is. Just reading your messages right so let, let's go up a tiny little bit probably going to make a mess in here and we want to put our tentacles I can always clean it afterwards it, this feels very dirty it's well used well loved this stamp let's just clean the back otherwise it might just come off so I'm just just misting the back of my stamp with some water just to make sure it's going to clean properly. Listen to that racket outside. Can you hear that racket? We get this every day from about 8 o'clock in the morning. Drives me nuts. Right, so what colour to do? That's the question. Well, we're under the sea, aren't we? So I think we might go for a blue of some description. 
We could do medieval blue. Or we could do let's see Twilight Paradise. I don't know if Paradise is gonna to be too light. Let's go medieval blue because we'd definitely be able to see medieval blue. I mean, you could um, do it with Versamark and um, put some of the sparkly embossing powder on. We could do that anyway. No, we won't. Let's not for once. Because although I don't want this to be in the for really in the foreground, I want it to be in the background. Look at me, moppy, messy pub. This is in this this stamp is in stock. All the ones I'm using from Fairy Hogs are in stock on my website. Remember, if you buy those for me, you don't get the import duties because Fairy Hogs is an American company as well. Let's see how we're doing. Ooh, yes, that looks good, doesn't it? So when she comes in here, she's going to have that behind her. Should we just do one or should we do two? I think we might do two. It's not roadworks, Sue. It's um, they're re um, we live on a um, I rent from a a, a, pri a private guy. He's not, he's not a private guy. I rent privately, okay. And um, the estate next to us is actually a council estate. And um, our ho the house I'm in is well, we've been here for eight years, so the house is is about sixteen years old. But obviously the council house is a lot of the houses are a lot older and um they're just relaying all the gas mains uh, gas pipes. But it's really annoying. Let's have this one a little bit lower. Let's move that up a bit. This is where I faff. Thinking on my feet, faffing, faffing, faffing. And this is just the acetate that comes with the uh stamp so that uh, I don't actually get ink on my card until I want to. Okay, that, that's where we're going. So we're having that one a bit lower. Might be right, might be wrong. It's just a background, let's not stress. So I don't need to ink it all. I must remember to clean this after. I could have used a piece of paper underneath, and I normally do, but I didn't. Give it a good old press. I love this stamp. It's so cool. There you go. Okay, there's our background done. While we're at it, actually, while we're in here, we might as well stamp the sentiment, haven't we? Which might be a bit of a challenge, seeing as I've just got... I should have done the sentiment first. <coughs> Excuse me. Because it means I've got to now keep the um, embossing powder away from my tentacles. Otherwise, I'm going to get white tentacles. I don't want white tentacles. It looks really cool on that, that paper, doesn't it? I think so, anyway. Right, so serenity. Let's give it. Let's give a little bit of a anti-static swipe. Carefully. A lot. <laughs> and we'll come down in the in the in the corner again. Doesn't matter if I get ink on the back of this. Right. And we get Serenity, which is the name of the sentiment, again from Fairy Hogs, because it just matches so well. You could, of course, use some, and I, and I will pull them out and show you, um, some of Trudy's Under the Sea stamps with, um, with these as well. Let's just check that I've got enough space. Oh, perfect. Perfect. As, as Rodney would say. Let's have a look. Yeah. Cool. 
I don't think this is one that you can easily get straight actually I think it's a little bit of a jaunty angle right. so let's let's do our Versamark where is it getting a bit of a mess here as per tap 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 it was lovely coming home straight after the 8am show yesterday rather than staying all day really nice I'll have more of those <laughs> more mini one day specials obviously there's less time to show you stuff though we're going to emboss this in pure white. Now, what have I done with my pure white? Cosmic crystal. Cosmic. Oh, I think I took the pure white with me yesterday. Yes, I did. Here it is. We're going to say it's there. Because I can't see it. We're going to say it's there, though. And we're going to keep it away from my tentacles. So it's just pure white embossing powder from Sentiment to yours. Okay. Nathan's up. Right. Looks, I mean, this obviously could just be a uh, car disease. You don't have to do the pop out bit. I mean, I think that looks fabulous as it is. Right, let's, I'm gonna heat now. So obviously I'm gonna make a bit of a racket. I'll be as quick as I can. So this is going to go on the front. I think we'll wait for it to just cool down a little bit because obviously card has to settle a little bit before we actually put it on. And this is going to go on there as well, liking that. Now we've got another little bit of embossing to do. So I've got my um, fishies and I've got, uh, these are going to go on the inside of the card. And I've just cut the, um, um, cut the ones that are, uh, facing each other so I've left the biggie one out and I've cut them out of the watercolour card the the um, super smooth one because so they're a bit thicker so we're going to do a little bit of double embossing with these let's put that to one side let's put that under there nice and safe with some other stuff I put nice and safe absolutely ages ago down there right okay so we're gonna use my emboss it dabber we want a bit of paper again and we want that and we're going to use salvage patina uh, embossing glaze and we're also going to use um, pure silver uh, super fine from uh, Phil just a bit of a mix so we're gonna get squeeze our dabber this is just um, embossing ink but it's in a dabber form so it's just a little bit easier to use than putting your ink pad on and, and, or putting your fingers in, in the ink pad with it. And let's just pop this on. I've got a few scrappy bits off of it there. I don't know why. Put my fingers in that. Upside down. Let's just clean that up a bit. I can't have it on my mat. It's just like a, it's just a, like a glycerin the ink uh, and this is obviously the ranger one now we want our a little bit of the super fine it's a little bit of the silver just a little bit just a little bit a bit more so it's not completely covered yet 
I'm going to take that off. We've still got exposed ink there. But obviously, I need to get rid of this. That's going back in my... You see where I turned the thingy over there? The little fish over. Get rid of that. Don't want to contaminate my embossing glaze. Put the lid on before I knock it over. Then we're going to bring these back in again. And we're going to add some of the salvage patina embossing glaze, which is this is the latest colour. Just cover the rest of it with it. Not worry too much because I might have missed a bit, but we're going to go in a second coat in a minute anyway. That's that one. And kind of double embossing is, is a great thing to do with your die cuts. It just transforms them. I mean, obviously, we could cut them out of um, pattern papers to give them a bit of interest if you wanted to. But sometimes it's nice to have a bit of a, a glaze to them. I always find these lids difficult to put on. Right, so we need to anchor them. And I'm just going to use my, my normal speed. Should be quite quick. Just arrived. Good, Sue. You're going to enjoy those. So mainly we can see here the silver. And this one. Don't worry if you put what you think is too much silver on because the next step is going to change it. So we're going to go back again. Yeah, you can't get the Hampton Arts uh, ones uh, anymore. You you found out that, Jennifer, didn't you? you? They told you they weren't making them anymore, which is a bit daft. I've got, I quite I do quite like the Crafts 2 one, but I'm just getting used to it. I, sometimes I find I have to kind of um, press a little bit harder than the Hampton Arts one. But I, I do try and use the ones on telly that they've actually got for sale. There's no point showing people how to use something that we haven't got. So I'm putting the second coat here, making sure I've got plenty on. And then it's going back on my mat, but this time I'm uh, back in my paper rather. This time I'm only going to use the salvage patina, which is why I haven't cleared that up. So we've got plenty of the base layer on already. This is quite a nice thing to do with the um, anchor as well. I'll show you one I've done with the anchor. Um, and I've added copper in there as well because the salvage patina is going to work well to make things look like that patina so they're, you know, of the sea and a little bit rusty. They're not rusty, they're patinaed. I mean, this one here, this one is the salvage patina and um, embossing glaze and also the crap pistachio one because I didn't want her to have rusty fins. Or I'm saying to her, it could be a, a merman, couldn't it? It doesn't have to be a mermaid. Okay, get a hold of that. So tiny. This will back in. I mean, don't worry if you do contaminate your powders a tiny bit. You don't want to do it ideally. You wouldn't really want to have pink mixed in with it, but... Um, the odd granule here and there isn't going to make that much difference. Right, so. Oh, what am I doing? Heating, that's what I'm doing. Forgetting what I'm doing. And they'll always, every single one you do will look different because you'll have put the silver somewhere else on them. And you'll see the second, second application, it, it moves around more because it really melts what there is before and sometimes when you see you've got like a little white edge around there that's the um, embossing powder moving and re-melting it's really cool see it move can you see how it's moved there it's, it's really cool. It's really cool. And this one, I don't know how, but I got kind of little bubbles and things in this one. This one went a bit, little bit wild. I don't know whether I overheated it or not. I don't know, but it looks a little bit strange. But it's still going to work. I'm still going to use it. <laughs> I 
madness, absolute madness, isn't it, Jennifer? I just don't understand that, you know. How many stamping companies are there, you know, and they'd be just, they'd just be out of business if no, there wasn't a call for stamping. I'm just cleaning off my residue with an edging of curling block. Right, okay, so let's think about putting this together now. So we need to put, oh, it's underneath here, isn't it? It's underneath, Julia. Let's get this, in fact, let's put this on first and then we'll put our mermaid on. <laughs> That's the bit from my, where I need to remember to clean it. <laughs> Doesn't matter though, because it's going to get hidden. Now, obviously I could have matted and layered this on extra card as well, but I've decided not to. I've just gone with the white because I'm only doing a small pop out card. The more mats and layers I put on, the smaller the amount of pattern paper I could get on there. And that's that's why I've um, gone for this. Let me just see if I can get this straight without making too much of a mess with the glue, which I have done. Okay. That just looks lovely, doesn't it? I'm really happy with that. Really happy with that. So I thought, like I say, I thought I'd do the pop-out card here because I can take my time with you and and explain things a little bit better rather than being rushed because I have done a few pop out cards on the TV um, and you really have to kind of seriously over prep them like everything else really just to get everything done and it's not it's not anything against them at all because they you know they're doing their job but we just get a little bit more time when we dictate what time we've got on the lives. As long as you guys have got the time to watch, of course. And do remember that this will be available on my um, in the video section on my page. Um, and so, well, forever, I assume. I don't think Facebook normally take them off. Um, uh, and I'll also upload it to YouTube just in case as well. So it'll be available later on today on youtube so it's you know you, if you, when you get your dies which will be 10 days ish then um you can watch it back again right let's have a we do that thing with the paper again pick it up with my tweezers and pop it on down I mean, I could have filled in a little bit down the bottom with some other stamps as well, but I think that works very nicely. Very happy with that. So what we just need to do now before we actually put this together is figure out how we, where we're having our um, fishies. So there they go really well, don't they? So we have one of those up there and one of these coming down there, perhaps. Because I don't want them. I've only got two, so this is the thing. I haven't got threes. I should really have threes. Faff, 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 faff. They could be having a standoff. Oi, I'm bigger than you. No, I'm bigger than you. <laughs> oh, dear. Yes, I know. I don't know why that one disappeared off Facebook, the fills, because that was almost immediately, wasn't it? Literally, like, either the same day or the next day. It's very weird. Very weird. I think he's not, he's not a quick, as quick at getting them on um, YouTube as I am. I think if I don't do it, then I forget. So, it, happens, also, it has to happen, happen almost immediately. Let's have that one up there. I'm just going to put them. I'm not going to even think about where I'm putting them now because I can faff around forever. And you could put three on. So three would be better. I don't know what it is about threes. I think it's more pleasing to the eye to see threes of things. Odds are better, aren't they? You do it odds in gardening as well. I ever have time to do gardening, which is not at all. Alright, there we go. So there's our fishies in there. 
Now what we need to do now is assemble. So we need to put the two pieces together. As I said to you, you could this could be stamped, you can have all sorts of things going in there, or you can actually decide to have like fishes and things hanging with some fire line or, or you know the, the clear uh, twine down there if you want to. But do all of it before you actually assemble it. If you're stamping on your background paper, do your stamping before you put it in, because obviously now it's not flat. Okay. So to put it together, we used to use foam tape, uh, and if you're using foam tape, you put your foam tape on uh, three sides and then you just start off with a little bit you just peel a little bit off until you, you're comfortable with it but it works really well with the quick grab, grab glue as well um, whatever brand you use so obviously I'm using uh, the sentiment to yours one so we're gonna go just on this panel here on the front and this is easy because you can really see where you're going with it so you do need to make sure that both pieces are the same length as in um, width rather um, and then you have a look at the front make sure that's nice and neat on the front as well and then you want to commit to it give it a really good push I hope that it doesn't move okay there's the inside and then we do the same thing on the other flap And then that's going to go, you do exactly the same thing, trying to get glue all over your fingers. Have a look at that. Have a look at the back, make sure that that's nice and neat. And you haven't got ink all over the place. And there we go. There's your card. I mean, obviously I've got a little bit sticking out there. That's from um, where I've placed the inside bit. If you're worried about that, just score it so that it folds. But I, I'm, I'm fine with that because it's only a little tiny bit. So there we go, there's our pop out. So somebody gets it in the post, says, oh, what a lovely card, I really like that. And then they open it up and think, wow, look at that. <laughs> really easy to do, really easy to do. Before we kind of just um, finish off, I just wanted to bring in some bits and pieces that I was rooting around when, when you joined it. So some ideas for backgrounds, really. So obviously you can go for your, um, uh, this is shaving foam background and I've used um, Diane Reevely's, um Dilusionals uh, ink sprays, Vibrant Turquoise and London Blue. Just pop my um, shaving foam in a, a, a box, spritz with a bit of this, used an end of a pokey tool to swizz it all around and then you push your card into it. When it comes out, it's covered with shaving foam and you just use the back of your ruler just to um, um, remove the shaving foam and you're left with that, which is a really cool background. So that's going to work with anything really. So you can see, bringing our mermaid, that's going to work. You might want a darker colour. Um, but we're going to have like the porthole in there. You could have the fishes going around, however you want. So you can see that's going to be a great background to use. I've also got these as well. So the, this is um, the Sentimentally Yours, um, the, the, what was it called? The, the blend, I want to say blending paste. Um, you know, the little tubs that we did uh, with some glitter over it. We wanted Trudy stencils because this is from a uh, kind of nautical range. Again, that's going to work. What I thought might be quite nice, actually, is if we had, this is a frame that I've created with the largest two dies of the square. So we could actually have, I don't know, you could actually have the, the tail coming out of that, just trim off that little bit there, and that could be quite a cool card. Or, of course, you could have, uh, you could cut an aperture out um, and be looking in to the mermaid, coral mermaid going in there or the porthole. There's loads of things you can do, loads of combinations. I mean, this is one of Trudy stamps, the angelfish. Maybe a bit big, but obviously you can then, I mean, you can use your squares, whatever you want to. That might work. That's on one of Phil's papers. This is um, one of Trudy's stamps. So it could be that 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 this 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 um, 
uh, passenger on this uh, cruise liner has spotted um, Neptune out there thinking, oh, look at him, you know. <laughs> Whatever. But you get, get the idea. So you can see that you can use the dies with um, um, lots of other things that you might have in your stash. This is a indigo blue stencil. Again, this is a great one to use for your backgrounds as well. One of the circle stencils with the uh, grit paste and uh, luscious powders over the top. So hopefully that's given you lots and lots of ideas of how you can use the, the dies with your stamps and with your stencils and with all your background mediums, whatever you've got in your stash. So I'm going to sign off for now and um, just continue pottering and playing with the dies. Um, I, don't forget the shows are on the craft store tomorrow at 11am and 3pm only. And um, do make sure that if you want anything to make sure you purchase before the end of tomorrow because the guys over at Tutu Designs will kind of pick up all the orders and start packing from Friday onwards uh, to ship over to the UK. So thanks very much for joining me. Enjoy the rest of your day and I will see you tomorrow on the Telebox. Bye.